Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. Today we're going to be playing Mystic Midway Rest in Pieces for the Philips Compact Disc Interactive, or CDI. I think this is my first CDI Let's Play ever. I recently picked up a uh, non-working 220, got it working, and uh, I had a couple of games from several years ago, and Mystic Midway Rest in Pieces is one of them. Played it for quite a bit the other night, had a good time, and uh, so I'm going to show it off in the form of a Let's Play. Uh, not a whole lot of great strategies to talk about in this game, but it is a skill-based sort of carnival shooter um, that is actually, I think, a lot of fun to play. Uh, CDI doesn't have a lot of great games, but Mystic Midway Rest in Pieces is actually one that I've enjoyed quite a bit over the years. It's one of the CDI games I've gone back to the most because it's a good, smooth, skill-based game, and that's not a very common trait uh, among CDI games. Smooth and skill-based. Um, yeah, two, two phrases you don't see included in the same sentence very often. Um, this game does have some cheese. I'm going to let the cutscenes roll out. I'm going to let the cutscenes play out. You guys can just kick back, grab some popcorn, uh, laugh at the screen if you want to. Uh, it's some good cheese, but the gameplay itself is actually fun, and the uh, the animation and graphics and things like that are actually pretty smooth as well, for, uh, by CDI standards anyway. So let's go ahead and hit uh, play CDI. It'll take us right into the game, and it'll probably start us off with a uh, cutscene introduction. Hurry, hurry, hurry! <laughs> Welcome to the Mystic Midway. So, what did you do to get here? Nothing. <laughs> That's what they all say. This place is a way station for losers like you. <laughs> no matter. It's all just a game. <laughs> and you'd be the player. I call it Rest in Pieces! <laughs> pieces! <laughs> what a crack up! <laughs> what? You don't think it's funny? <laughs> You'd better get used to my jokes, pal. You look like someone that's going to be here for an eternity. <laughs> it's showtime. <laughs> okay, so that's the introduction. Uh, I don't know what the story is. Maybe you got kicked to hell or something, or purgatory or whatever, and you're forced to play this shooting gallery game. But uh, yeah, so this is the entire game. What you see here is pretty much the entire game. Uh, ammo's in the top right-hand portion of the screen. Uh, your timer is in the bottom right-hand portion where the skull is. It's basically this candlestick that melts down. Once it melts completely, uh, it is time over. Uh, scores in the top left, and every level introduces you to uh, the enemies and items and whatever that you'll see in it. Uh, so axes and uh, maces are worth 10 points each. Uh, those uh, front-facing skeletons are worth 20. And then the skeleton heads are 30, and uh, the tombstones, RAPs, are no points. You'll see tombstones along the bottom of the screen as we play. And uh, so let's go ahead and click the uh, the left mouse button. We're actually using the CDI mouse for this. Uh, we're not using a gamepad controller. If you do play this on your CDI, use a mouse, use a trackball, use the rollerball controller. Don't use a gamepad. It's very slow and sluggish. Uh, with compact disc interactive games, you'll you'll you'll. After playing a bunch of them, you'll realize, you'll get to know what accessories work better with certain games over others. Anything that requires, like, you know, fast cursor movement, things like that, mouse or trackball is always the way to go. Anything that's more traditional, where you're moving in four or uh, eight directions or something like that, gamepad is the best for those. So, like, Dymo's Quest would be a good example of a game where you want to use a gamepad, not a mouse. So, but for Mystic Midway, you want to use a mouse. And uh, so what we do is we just use the mouse to shoot stuff. Stuff, just like this and it actually controls very smoothly with the CDI mouse or trackball whichever one you decide to use uh, Never was able to get my hands on a rollerball controller and I, I would love to try one of those sometime in the future um, But yeah, this is uh, a very basic game 
um, but uh, the uh, level complexities do increase quite a bit. They get way more challenging, more enemies come out, and uh, it becomes a lot of fun to play. These first couple stages are pretty easy just to ease you in to the to the experience. You do still want to make sure that you play properly though and actually try to shoot stuff uh, because if you run out of ammo and don't meet your score threshold, uh, it's instant game over. You get no continues in this game. You've got one life and uh, that is pretty much it. So for this first level, we're just gonna make sure we uh, we hit our targets, and I'm pretty sure we've hit the score threshold already. It was probably like I don't I don't remember what it was actually. Well, maybe they'll put he did okay on your tombstone. And so after each level, this guy talks to you. You can actually skip through that, uh, which is nice. So yes, I know the full motion video stuff is cheesy. It's indefensible, really, in this day and age. But, uh, you know, you can just skip through it, you know, and just get right back to the action. It's one thing I like about this game, it's just constant action. You don't have to sit through all the uh, animations and stuff like that. So we need 300 points, and so let's go ahead and do that. So I find that the heads that pop up and turn around, they're the hardest to hit. I try to avoid them if I can, although on these early levels, I don't really have much of a choice. Uh, because the second they start turning, you can't hit them. Your your shots won't count. You'll notice that it makes a different sound effect when their heads are turning. Blow me down. And so we're at 220. We need 300 total. But these guys, these these front-facing skeletons, where you can see their chests, that they're, they're the easiest to hit. Um, you know, their their targets are wider. Uh, they're also worth decent points usually. So I like to try to go for them if I can. But we've already hit our score threshold. It was 300. And you can see our timer is getting close to running out. Um, one thing I'll do sometimes if I'm just in a rush is I'll just empty my ammo, just like so. And um, I'll empty my ammo and it'll take us right to the next level. But the thing is, if you're trying to play for a high score, you don't want to do that because you want to hit as many things as you can because this is a score-based game. So the big ticket items here are the uh, the spiders, uh, the the big chunky spiders, uh, especially the ones that are worth 250. They zigzag up the playfield, so they're tough to hit. And then these full size skeletons, they're worth 100. They're also really really good to get as well. Boom, 250 right there. Very nice points. And I'm gonna just go ahead and skip him. Try to hit that guy. You can see how the tombstones down in the bottom are a little more intricate now. It's uh, you know, there's many more of them, and so they're much more likely to block your shots, so you have to be very careful about, uh, you know, where you're aiming. You have to, you have to really uh, think about where the tombstones are. You'll notice that there are small gaps between the tombstones, and, um, you know, so on levels like this, I like to keep my, my, my gun positioned sort of between those gaps. Oh, I missed him. It's okay, we've hit our score threshold already. Those, those zigzagging spiders are worth so many points. You can get through some of these levels really quickly just by hitting a few of them. Um, enemy patterns in this game, I don't know if they're completely random or not. I, I feel like they are, but I haven't really studied the game in that regard. And, uh, ooh, wish I got another one of those. So, I, I don't know if they're completely random. I feel like they are because I've gamed over twice on level 19. I've gamed over twice now on level 19, but the level 19 was totally different. Uh, and it was really weird. I don't know if the game glitched out or if it's just because things are random or not. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. So we're at level 4. We need 600 points. Uh, these blue orbs are really interesting to hit because these hands come out and launch them at an angle. And uh, they're actually pretty tricky to get because another hand will come up and then try to grab it. And you can't hit the orb uh, if the hand grabs it. Uh, your, your projectile will get absorbed by the hand. So, it's kind of fun. There's there's some good stuff in this game. You know, this is one of those games that people like to really trash on on CDI, but I find it to actually be really enjoyable. Um, it's one of the reasons I, I like having a CDI around. Although, if you are going to play it in this day and age, I would probably recommend trying to play the MS-DOS version of the game. Uh, just run it in DOSBox, and it's pretty much the same thing, but it animates better. I think it's probably 60 FPS. Uh, I haven't played it since the, uh, the the late 90s, but I do remember it being significantly smoother. Uh, no slowdown or anything. Everything animates nicer. And I need to make sure I go ahead and get some points here, otherwise we might get a game over. Let's go ahead and waste these, these bullets. And uh, we're out of time. So I, I don't think the score threshold was that high, Amazing. so I'm pretty sure we got it. I must get your autograph uh, sometime. Who's next? 
And there we go. Yeah, so, okay, we probably just barely made the threshold, so it's a thousand points this time. Um, but yeah, like I said, you're probably best off playing the MS-DOS version, but if you have a CDI, if you're, if you're a collector of obscure platforms, uh, this is a fun game, if you have the right controls. You have to have the right controls. I think what happens is a lot of people play this with, like, a gamepad, or they play it with one of the, the really bad wireless remotes that come bundled with some CDIs. Play it with a wired mouse or a trackball. Game is a lot of fun. So the big thing uh, to hit here is the uh, the coffins. The coffins are really tough to get. They open up, they fly across the screen and just open up for a short period of time, but they're worth, you know, the best points. So it's very risky going for them. So sometimes what I do is I just go for some of these other enemies, just like so, and hope that I can uh, get some points. The front-facing skeletons are worth good points now. You know, they're like 100, 100 each, I think. So... Uh, so if, if I can hit a bunch of those, then we're pretty much good. But you've got to watch out for these other guys that just get in your way. And you also have to make sure that you don't, uh, you know, waste your projectiles just like that. Very tricky. It's tricky. It's, like I said, it's a skill-based game, and there aren't many like this on the CDI. Um, games that actually require some discipline, uh, you know. There we go, we just hit our score threshold, so we're good. Yeah, not a lot of games like this on CDI that require like really good precision and whatnot. A lot of action games in CDI are just very sloppy. Uh, apparently the CDI, I believe, doesn't have built-in hardware scrolling capabilities, so everything has to be done completely in software. And um, and so traditional uh, platformers and side-scrollers and shoot 'em ups are usually very choppy in the system and not all that much fun to play. Um, and even when they do run smooth, they're not usually amazing to begin with. Uh, you know, the Apprentice is probably the, the top one in the system. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is actually a very smooth playing game. It still holds up really well from a gameplay standpoint. So 850 points. Uh, yeah, what I find kind of interesting about this game is that they have a high score threshold near the beginning. And then, as you progress, you go through 10 levels or so where the score threshold is actually much lower. Which is interesting. So the score threshold actually goes down, and then it goes back up. Or it gets more challenging, at least. There we go. The skeletons that go up the screen are really satisfying to hit because they, they're constantly scrolling up. You've got to really line up your shot correctly. Um, and make sure, you know, you hit them before they actually go off the screen. Hey, hey yeah, we're good on points right now. Um, uh, so a power-up that's going to start appearing, uh, uh in these upcoming levels well, is this skeleton with sort of like a birthday candle on the top of its head. It's no take it when they appear and you hit them, they give you all of your ammo and time back. And, uh, so those levels with those skeletons, or those skulls, are actually a lot easier. So there's a fun enemy type here. There's a little green ghost that pops out, and you've got these boxes that spin around. I don't bother with the boxes because the window of opportunity to hit them is very small, so I don't really mess around with them. So look, look at that. We went from a thousand to a six hundred and fifty. So that's what I'm talking about. The uh, the score thresholds just change constantly. It's kind of weird. Um, hey, watch it! These Gilman hands are actually decent too. They give you a decent amount of points. And that was a lucky shot on that box. So you can only hit the box when it's facing you. And if you don't hit it when it's facing you, uh, you just you just miss completely. It, it rejects your shot. So these are the green ghosts I was talking about. They're fun to hit because they also go up the screen. They really really require you to uh, get in position and then prep your shot. And if you if you don't do that, you're gonna miss. You're gonna waste your ammo. And all, a lot of this is about leading shots, it's about aiming correctly, like I said, it's a, it's a skill-based game. And that's why I think it's fun. I also like, I've always liked spooky themes, you know, you guys know I'm a huge fan of stuff like Castlevania and whatnot. Uh, Splatterhouse, all sorts of stuff, anything that's just kind of spooky in nature, like Castlevania is not like straight horror. Um, but it's got spooky elements, you know, skeletons and zombies and stuff like that. And, uh, this is kind of similar, you know? I, I like games that, that, that do that with the, uh, you know, the themes. So, I like, I like macabre. Okay, so, yeah, 800 points, just more of the same. We're just gonna keep going here. Another green skeleton. Ooh, oh, not skeleton, but green ghost. The green ghosts are always worth good points. 
Oh, I just missed him barely. The uh, coffins are still decent. And then he's screwed over by... Oh, I just barely missed him. Got him, nice. That was good, actually. Skeleton, hey! skeleton! Just barely. Hey! He almost went off the screen. Alright, we're, we've we've got this. We're, we'll be fine. We only need 75 points, I think. Did it say a thousand? I wasn't paying attention again. <laughs> I think I probably said what score we needed, but my, my memory is really crap. Because I'm trying to play. Hard to play and think at the same time. I'm already trying to talk and play at the same time. Now, adding thinking on top of that just makes my brain shut down completely. Yeah, we've just stormed past whatever goal it was. It's not anywhere near 1800, 1900. So, all right, very good. Yes, sir. You're on a real roller coaster with that score. <laughs> <laughs> so cheesy. So there was a second Mystic Midway game on the CDI called Phantom Express, and it's honestly not very good. Uh, I don't recommend it at all. It's uh, it's an on rail shooter. Uh, so it's still a, a game that's good with like the mouse or trackball. Um, but it's it's bad. It's just bad. <laughs> yeah, don't recommend it. Um, I'd actually be interested to see if there's a Phantom Express on uh, PC, see if it's any better. But the theme of Phantom Express, for one, uh, not all that great. Uh, you're, you know, you're on this roller coaster, it's really choppy because it's the CDI, for one. But then uh, they're just throwing all these weird things at you and really uh, annoying noises. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's something alright, but not something I recommend. So I'm gonna have to hit some of these guys because I think I'm not gonna meet my score threshold, which is actually not good. We have to do this over. So 725, boom, 875, just one more, and that's it. I don't think we hit it. Hey, look at that monster madman! Yeah, maybe we did. <laughs> You're doing fantastic. Okay, we did it. Yeah. Okay. Whew. So 900 points this time. If uh, you do really poorly, he actually will say, you know, he's got specific lines that he says when you do really poorly, so you know when you failed. Uh, but 900 points, just keep that in the back of our head. So 900, 900, 900. It's not that hard, Austin. But we definitely want these skeletons yes. on this level because they're big points. I think they're they're like they're like 100 points. But those tombstones, man, they can just get right in your face. You can't do anything about it. And then other enemies will also block your shots. Which is tough to deal with. Got one. Got one. Got another. Got another. So you can see how the, you know, the gameplay is picking up in speed. But it does get more challenging. And it does get more fun. Got him. Okay, we're good. So 900. We're good. We're at 1,000. Now we're at 1,100. Now we just keep playing for points. Now, unfortunately, uh, CDI has this battery backup method called the Timekeeper. And the Timekeeper is this sort of battery mechanism within, I think, some kind of ROM chip. It's a really odd setup. Uh, and these things are notorious for dying. Pretty much at this point in time, just about every Timekeeper you run into will be dead. And the CDI 220 I picked up recently also has a dead Timekeeper. Now, what the Timekeeper does um, you know, when it dies, depends on your CDI model. Mine, it just means that my data doesn't save. So, CDI, and there's the birthday skeleton, I'm gonna call him that. Uh, CDIs will save, uh, game data. And you can, you know, every CDI's got a game management or data management. Very much like a Sega CD or, or something like that. And, um... Uh, when the timekeeper goes, you can no longer save data after you power the system off. So, this will actually save my scores to the CDI system itself. Um, but then it will... Um, the scores will get wiped out when I power it off, unfortunately. So, now, my CDI 450 I used to own, um, when its timekeeper went bad, I couldn't play games at all, basically. Uh, sometimes it would load them, but then it would crap out two minutes in. Other times, it wouldn't even recognize any discs. Uh, fortunately, my CDI 220 can read discs perfectly fine. It just, uh, because the timekeeper's dead, my data will get wiped out when I turn this off. So, okay, uh, 700 points this time. 
So more skeletons, more uh, blue orbs, which is good. The blue orbs are decent points if you can hit them. And I want to hit that uh, that birthday skeleton if I can. That would be great. So I can get all my uh, my ammo back. Uh, and my time. It's not just ammo, but it's your time as well. And I've had gameplay sessions where uh, I have bar barely uh, made it through the level. It was like by the skin of my teeth. But then a birthday skeleton appeared right at the very end, and I, it reset my time uh, and ammo, and I was thus able to finish the level successfully. Now, I don't know how many levels are in this game. I really don't. I have no idea. Uh, level 19, I think, is about as far as I've ever gotten in the game. And uh, so I'm hoping we can make it past that, but we probably won't. The and he repeats some of these too. I, I don't think we're gonna make it, but uh, you never know. We'll see. So we're on level 13, 800 points needed. And we got some more skeletons. All about those skeletons if you can, if you can shoot them. That's how you can build your points really fast on uh, some of these later levels. But you gotta be accurate. If you're not accurate, you're not gonna hit them. And they're gonna fly off the screen. You're not gonna get those points. You're also gonna waste your bullets. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll go for the Gilman hands because they are usually decent chunks of points and they're pretty easy to hit. They stay out for a while. And these uh, rotating skeleton heads, I really don't like to go for them. Yep, yeah, and so we're pretty much good with our score threshold Got now. It. And so we'll go ahead and just keep uh, shooting stuff for more points. Let's see what kind of high score we can get here. If anyone uh, out there actually plays Mystic Midway Rest in Pieces, feel free to share your uh, high score. Uh, down below in the comments section. Got me. And... Yep. Yeah, so the birthday skeleton, it seems like it's completely random. Like uh, there doesn't seem to be any rhythm or rhyme to it, whether it pops up or it doesn't. Alright, so 900 points again. Got him. Yikes. Got him. Got Just going me. for those skeletons. They're worth so many points. Ow. You want to... Oh, there. Missed him again. Ah. Alright, yeah. good deal. <laughs> yeah, so you gotta watch out for those blue orbs too, because uh, if you're aiming for them, you know, where the hand grabs it from seems to be random too. Sometimes it'll they'll throw it from the top. And it'll go all the way down to the bottom. Sometimes I'll throw it from, you know, the second row and it'll go to another hand on the second row. So, lots of fun little patterns in this game. Well, it's not the and, uh... Alright, 1,000 points. We got some more zigzag spiders. And the birthday skeletons, eh, you don't really need them when they're your first enemies. Seriously. Okay, this is really bad, actually. I think. Got one. Good. Oh, very nice. Okay, we were actually back in action. I thought we weren't going to get this because I was running out of ammo. But uh, ended up getting the zigzag skeleton, uh, zigzag spider. And we just got the birthday skeleton. So now we can just go to town. We've, we've met our goal already. Now it's just about getting those points. Oh, I just missed it. Got it. Yeah, those zigzag spiders are really tough to get. So if you can get them, it's really satisfying because it's good points. Points are, you know, equates to survival in this game. You have to get points to survive. And you have to survive to get more points, you know? It feeds into, uh, they feed into one another. And that's it. All right, good deal. Hey, looks like you got a shot at getting out of here. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, and this guy is also in the sequel too, but uh, they went really overboard with him in it. All right, so everything here is worth small points, so this is going to be tricky. So I definitely want those gill men, and then those uh, skeletons that face us. Those are good. I don't want the the rotating skeleton heads though. Um, all right. Not good so far. I've lost a lot of ammo. Ooh, nice. Got one. 
And another. There we go. Yeah, these coffins are so tough to hit. Oh, we've got another one. Here we go. Can we get another one? Nope. We got him. That's fifty. I think the uh, I think those are seventy-five. But I'm running out of time, so I have to really start hitting some stuff. Fifty, yeah, and we're done. I don't think we met it. I th was it a thousand? Oh, that's the worst score I've ever seen. And I've seen them all. <laughs> and I've seen them all. <laughs> well, that sucks. We weren't able to get past that level. But that's what happens. You'll get to a level, and the score threshold's kind of high, and then, um, you know, the score threshold's kind of high, and then you just won't be able to do anything. Um, and that's exactly what happened to me at uh, level 19 the other day when I was playing this. Uh, I, you know, it just gave me a really high score threshold, then really crappy low point enemies. And, uh, yeah, very tricky. So, uh, I'm not gonna do another run of the game. I think we actually had a decent session there still. We actually did make it, uh, 14 or 15 levels in, which is actually, a, a, you know, a decent session. I'm pretty happy with that. Again, 19 is as far as I've made it. But, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, gameplay session. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do more you know, oddball CDI gameplay sessions like this in the future. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of games at my disposable. Uh, disposable. <laughs> I don't have a lot of games at my disposal, unfortunately. But uh, it's fun busting this one out. I actually do really enjoy this game. I know the CDI is not really a great platform for gaming. But uh, there are a couple of games on it like this that I do actually really enjoy going back to over time. And uh, this is a good pick up and play kind of game. You play it once for 20 minutes or so, or play a second round for another 20, and then, you know, turn it off and then fire it up a few days later, later play another round uh, or two. And uh, yeah, it's just fun. It's just a fun game. So it gets kind of bashed on, uh, I think, for its simplicity. But I think as far as actual gameplay is concerned, it's solid and it's fun. It looks good. And uh, it does have some personality to it with the, the sound effects they used, they used in the game, um, which I didn't really comment on as we played. But yeah, fun game. So uh, that's going to do it for me, guys. If you enjoyed this Let's Play, feel free to uh, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. I've got a lot of Let's Plays here and many more to come. Uh, for everyone else already sub, thanks you. Thanks you. <laughs> Thank you for your continued support. And uh, until the next one, take it easy.